Well, John Dunder was one of the biggest names in British television, beamed into homes around the country as the face of BBC News, and with her co-host Nick Ross even helping to solve crimes as the two presented BBC's Crime Watch programme. People all over the country are joining together once again to solve some of Britain's most difficult and serious crimes. Don't have nightmares, do. Sleep well. Good night. Good night. Well, her shocking murder remains an unsolved mystery, but this week, in an unrelated case, a French court heard another possible sensational theory that she'd been killed by a hitman in a case of mistaken identity. In a moment, I'll be joined by her former friend and co-host Nick Ross, plus former Scotland Yard detective Peter Bexley. But first, let's remind ourselves of that horrific day. A massive police hunt is underway tonight in West London for the killer of Jill Dando, who was murdered earlier today outside her terraced home in Fulham. The news stunned the nation. Nobody could understand how and why it happened. In the midst of a media frenzy, the police investigation grappled with little to no hard evidence. Finally, a particle of firearm discharge residue was alleged to have been discovered on the clothing of a local man, Barry George. This led to his conviction and sentencing to life imprisonment, but years later, in 2008, George was acquitted and released an innocent man. Jill Dando's killer was never found, but over 20 years on, the case remains unsolved. Well, this week, a French court heard she may have been killed by a hitman in a case of mistaken identity. Will we ever know the truth? Well, in that dramatic fresh twist this week, documents submitted to a French court suggested Jill may have been murdered by a Russian mafia hitman in a case of mistaken identity, the hitman possibly hired to kill another BBC journalist. Lawyers argue that the killer may have mistaken Jill for Lisa Brinkworth, pictured here next to Jill, because of similarities in their appearance and occupation, and they happen to live in the same area of West London. In fact, Jill's doctor was Alan Farthing, who was uh, Jill Dando's fiancé. So an extraordinary series of coincidences. Court papers submitted in the trial of French fashion tycoon Gerald Marie claimed he had recruited a hitman to murder Lisa Brinkworth after she went undercover to expose his agency. Marie, the former boss of Elite Model Agency, is being investigated over alleged sexual assault and rape involving at least 11 women. Well, joining me now is Jill Dando's former TV co-host and friend Nick Ross and former Scotland Yard detective and undercover hitman, although obviously he was pretending to be that at the time. Peter Blexley, welcome to both of you. Uh, Nick Ross, um, great to talk to you. Uh, I imagine every time you see this kind of headline in the media, it takes you back to that horrific day when your great friend, your great colleague, Jill, was murdered. I remember it so well. I was a newspaper editor at the time, had to cover the story. It was a genuinely horrific and shocking story and, of course, remains unsolved. When you've seen the details of what came out of this French court, does it have any plausibility to you? You know, it takes me back to that day, Piers, but it also takes me back to my first day as a, as a national journalist uh, for the BBC on The World at One. Many, many years ago, when I took up a story from the press, I was sent out to do a, a radio feature for it, for The World at One on Radio 4, and it didn't stand up. And when I got back, I said, I'm sorry, the story isn't true. And I remember the deputy editor saying to me, well, Nick, uh, we'll send you on another story tomorrow. I hope that stands up, because otherwise on Wednesday we'll send somebody else. Mm. This is the reality, Piers. You've edited a national paper. You mm. know the importance for journalists of getting a story out. Never research a story too far until it falls over. Mm. This story today is rubbish. It's mm. complete nonsense. It goes on the back of any number of conspiracy theories that have been pushed right from the start. The Metropolitan Police wasted a year on silly conspiracy theories. I spent a quarter of a century with the, working with the police. They constantly went on, on to conspiracy theories when there were much more simple explanations. This time, I mean, you know, we had Slobodan Milosevic, the, the, the leader of the, of the Serbs who was supposed to have killed her. We've had Arkan, some mysterious uh, uh, assassin from Serbia. We've had a, a, a warlord, I think we were called. We've had a hitman from a bar. I think it was called Joe. In, in, uh, in Spain, I think. We've had the whole of the London underworld turn over, the Liverpool underworld. We've had theories it was a paedophile. I mean, this is just saloon bar gossip. In this case, you have a case going through the French courts where they're trying desperately to overturn a statute of limitations. They're looking for anything they can. Um, I don't think Lisa Brinkworth herself thinks this is remotely true. This no, is something right. her lawyers have dredged up. Mm. It's, it's absolute no nonsense. I mean, the, I'm really the... sorry we're giving it this publicity. It's I depressing. Think some... Well, listen, I, I, I can... listen I, I 
have no reason to doubt what you're saying. I don't think we know the truth about this, and there have been so many theories, as you say. Lisa Brinkworth, I think you're right. I think she does not believe this has credence. What she did say, though, which is very interesting, is that the, it turns out the BBC were given a warning based on this threat that there'd been a conversation over her that a Russian mafia hitman had been hired by this model agency boss to kill her, Lisa Brinkworth, and the BBC were told about that, but she was never herself told of the threat. Her security was increased, but that threat information was not passed her. What do you think of that? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I've had threats against myself. They don't come from... Uh, there, there is no relationship with, with the, the killing of Jill Dando. The killing of Jill Dando, and it, it isn't, as, as you keep saying, a, an unsolved mystery. I mean, I think... Pretty much everything is out there. We know pretty much there, everything there is to know about that. There is no ongoing investigation. Her family don't want another investigation. Those of us on Crime Watch who are really close and were forensically following the investigation don't think there's anything unsolved that now that needs to be re resolved. But there is a hunger out there for a story, for a story, yeah. for a story. There's a hunger out there for some sort of conspiracy. And, and that's what we're feeding that. And honestly, it's unfair to Jill. It's so depressing. She was a, you know, a wonderful reporter. Mm. She was a, the most popular television presenter of, of her age. She was a real pathfinder for women in television. And I just think it's, it, it's all rather depressing, this. When you say that it's not unsolved, what, what, what do you mean? Do you, you believe you know what happened? Look, if you read... Firstly, about the, the first court. Remember, she was, uh, we have somebody who was convicted by a court, mm. a jury. Uh, that then went to, went to a court of appeal. The three learned judges were absolutely clear. There was, they thought the person convicted was rightly convicted. Eight years later, because of a piece of evidence that, in my opinion, should never have been offered in the first place, was withdrawn, it went to another trial. Now, eight years later, witnesses couldn't remember. It was a whole different, different experience altogether. Uh, this person was, was acquitted. Now, do I think we should open a, a reopen the inquiry? No, I don't. Do I think we should now follow, go back on all the silly conspiracy theories? No, I don't. Nick Ross, it's good to talk to you. I, as I say, uh, like I said at the start, it must always bring back incredibly raw emotions for you. And I completely understand why you feel the way yes, that you but, do. Yes, but Pierce, d d d don't, don't write them off as, as raw emotions because what I'm saying must be biased because she was my No, colleague. no, I don't mean that at all. You know, she, she was not... I was not romantically inclined with her, uh, associated with her anything else. In fact, it, what I learned from 23 years on Crime Watch mm. is that you have to be ev evidence-based. It's evidential, evidential, evidential. Yeah. In, in this case, as in so many others, the evidence doesn't stack up. Whereas the evidence that we had in the first court and in the Court of Appeal, and indeed much of which was heard in the, in the subsequent appeal, was very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. There were five or six reasons why it clearly wasn't a conspiracy. It wasn't a hitman. Very, very clear. I ran colleagues in, at, at Quantico and the FBI went through. They were absolutely clear it wasn't a hitman. This was very much like the, the murder of John Lennon. The forensic... A psychologist on the case was very clear right from the start this was going to be someone somebody who was uh, a personality disordered person so i don't think there's any great mystery here any great mystery that still needs to be solved i guess the mystery is that if you can read between the lines what you're alluding to but the person you're alluding to is a free man uh, and did win an appeal and that's i guess and, why and, there's and was acquitted and honestly yeah. if, if i'd been on the jury in that last court case i would have acquitted him as well yeah. on the evidence that i heard I understand. but that doesn't mean that the case should be reopened no well listen you're absolutely more than most people entitled to your firm opinion about that and i have no agenda about this at all simply it's in all the papers today based on this french court report and it's fascinating to get your take on it and i really appreciate you joining me tonight thank you nick Thank you. Peter Bexley, it's... A, well, we heard from Nick there. He used to run Crime Watch with Jill Dando. Obviously, he feels strongly about this. He thinks it's a load of conspiracy theory nonsense. There have been endless theories. It's pretty obvious who he thinks did this, but that person, in the end, was freed an um, innocent man. Yes, and I completely understand Mr Ross's frustration and, and the hurt he must feel. 
over losing his great friend and the fact that there is nobody in prison at the moment for that crime. Mm. That, of course, is frustrating for many, many people. I certainly would like to see the person who did that crime sentenced and, and, and serving a term of imprisonment, but it's not to be. I also was very much taken by what Mr Ross said in terms of evidence, evidence, evidence. Yeah. Well, in that, we're, like, joined at the hip because, yeah. of course, I'm a former detective. So what do you make of this stuff that's come out of this French court? I mean, on the face of it, it's a plausible theory in the sense that you've got another top television uh, female journalist who lives in the same area as Jill Dando, who had actually... Her doctor was Jill Dando's... Uh, fiance, which is just a coincidence, but she was investigating this very nasty model agency boss. He was overheard talking about this mafia hitman he'd hired to deal with her. That thread apparently was then relayed back to the BBC, but not to her, but they upped her security. You put it all together and you come forward to now and you think, well, is there any credence to this? Well, clearly the Metropolitan Police will be all over this today because, as you say, it's been so widely discussed throughout the media. Mm. What should now happen is that letters of cooperation between the French authorities and the Met should be exchanged, the necessary permissions granted, and that information should be sent to the Met so that it can be tested mm. to see whether it has any credence whatsoever. Nick, I think you're still with us and you wanted to come back in on that. Yeah, I mean, so much of this reporting is, is just wrong, Piers, and I don't blame you, because you're going with whatever is, is in the papers at the moment. One of the claims that's been made is that, is that uh, this... Uh, it was that Lisa Brinkworth lived near Jill, uh, Jill's fiancé. Mm. But that's not where Jill was murdered. Mm. Jill was murdered at her own home in, in Gowan Avenue, which she mm. very rarely visited, incidentally, and she wasn't followed there, which shows why this wasn't a professional... It's one of the many reasons this wasn't a professional hit. Um, and now this is all being conflated that she lived near Jill Dando where mm. the murder took place. That's not true. Right. She, she was living with Alan Farthing, her boyfriend at the time. That's a, that's an and important... many of these other things that are being published at the moment just don't fit. Well, to be true. honest, Nick, I think it's incredibly helpful to have you talk us through this because no one will know more about this case than you. And you clearly, you know, I, when I talked about the emotions you have, I meant really about having to go through it all again when these things blow up like this. Uh, and it must be, just on a human level, it must be painful for you. That, that's what I meant by that. Well, yes, no, you're, quite, you know, you, you're right. And, and for everybody who was, who was associated with her, I mean, one of the great things that came out, you know, if anything good can come out of a death, was Jill's legacy, which is the Jill Dando Institute at University College London, which is now the biggest crime science institute in the world. And one of the things, you know, where... Peter Blexley says we're, we're joined at the hip on, is evidence, evidence, yeah. evidence. It, opinions are to a penny. Anybody can come up with a theory. It's whether you can actually pin it to evidence, evidence, evidence. And in this case, for those out there of your, of your viewers who still believe this was a conspiracy, you know, I, I mentioned there were so many things against it. It wasn't her right home. Anybody professional would have known where she was. This person was hanging around for four hours, three or four hours, was seen by four witnesses there, all of whom picked up somebody very, very similar in appearance, and one of whom picked out somebody in an ad identity parade. The person used an amateur gun, not, not a real gun. They had no escape vehicle. This Gowan Avenue is a straight road. After the murder, they had to walk away in full view of everybody else. That's not professional. Jill had a key in the door. Instead of her pushing her in and, and killing her inside, they did it in, in plain view. That's not professional. They held the gun firmly against her temple. That's only something you do in a crime of passion or when you're a real amateur mm. because you get all the forensic blowback on you. There were so many reasons this was not a professional hit. It's so clear on the evidence. But Nick, given... And there is so much evidence... Given that, points that you in clearly feel direction. the person who was originally convicted and then acquitted in the second uh, trial, is walking free. How do you feel about that? There were times on Crime Watch Piers where I really got so upset on the victim's behalf, I wanted to take a skewer and put it in somebody's eyes who'd, who'd caused them this pain. But I also used to then go to prisons and, and meet offenders. And that really... It's a different issue. Mm. I don't wish somebody was in prison about this, to be honest. I don't think that would reduce the crime rate. Uh, one of the things I have learned, paradoxically, and through the Jill Dando Institute of Crime Science and through working with the police, is that you can't arrest your way out of crime mm. and you can't imprison your way out of crime. In Texas, they 
imprisoned, incarcerated infinitely more people than in Denmark, but their crime rates peaked at the same time and went down at the same time and in pretty much the same ways. Mm. So, no, I, I don't feel so bad that nobody's in prison over this. I just feel, thank God, great relief that whoever did it doesn't appear to have done it again. Yeah. Nick Ross, thank you again for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And, Peter, thank you for your expert analysis as well.